In this video, I want to point out a serious problem with these epistemically loaded senses of theory, particularly the upplaying versions. It's a simple problem that I'm sure a lot of you have seen coming already. Uh, the problem is that if we don't have an epistemically neutral concept of theory, it makes it nearly impossible to talk about theories without contradicting ourselves. You see the problem most clearly when we talk about theories that we used to believe are true, but that we no longer think are true. For example, in the second century AD, the Roman mathematician Claudius Ptolemy came up with a theory of the cosmos that was widely accepted until the 16th century. In this theory, the Earth is motionless at the center of the cosmos. It doesn't rotate. The planets, the sun and the moon, the stars all move around the Earth in perfect circles. Actually, the planets were mounted on smaller circles that were themselves anchored to points on the larger circular orbit. So the planets traced out these loopy paths through space as all of these circles turned. And the stars were thought of as pinholes in this outermost sphere that rotated once every 24 hours. Obviously, we don't accept this theory anymore, and we haven't for some time. It's very natural to say something like this, that scientists no longer accept Ptolemy's geocentric theory of the cosmos. We don't have any trouble understanding what we mean when we say this. But if so, then the usage of theory in this sentence cannot be the one we were looking at in the last video. It can't be an epistemically loaded up layer. Just look at how that would translate. If we read theory as implying that the model is widely accepted as true, as well supported by the evidence, then we're left saying this. Scientists no longer accept Ptolemy's geocentric theory, which is widely accepted as true. If we're saying this about scientists' current attitudes towards Ptolemy's theory, then we're literally contradicting ourselves. The same theory can't be both widely accepted and not widely accepted. If we're stuck having to use theory in this epistemically upplaying sense, then it's literally impossible to say some very natural things, like that a theory is false, or that a theory has been falsified, or that the evidence for a theory is weak. All of these contradict the upplaying definition of a theory. But of course we can talk about false theories and falsified theories and weakly supported theories. It's no mystery what's going on. It just means that when we talk about theories in this context, we're not using the word in an epistemically upplaying sense. We're using the word in a different sense. And it doesn't help to switch to the epistemically downplaying sense because you get the same problem just with different expressions. If we switch to the downplaying version, then we can't, for example, talk about theories as well supported by the evidence. You couldn't say that quantum field theory is the most well supported theory we have in science, while at the same time defining theory as something that is not well supported. You're literally contradicting yourself. But of course, we can say this without contradicting ourselves. And that's because in these cases, we're not using theory in an epistemically loaded sense at all. In all these cases, we're using the word theory in an epistemically neutral sense. We're using the word theory in a way that by itself doesn't imply anything about the evidential status of the theory. It doesn't imply anything about how much or how little evidence there is to support the theory. It's neutral on these questions. So in our next video, we'll unpack this epistemically neutral sense of the term theory.